Hi, I'm Eman Adam, your news reporter for Immuno News Channel. Contact tracing is an important part of preventing the spread of infectious illnesses, inclusive of case and source investigations. How is contact tracing done for COVID-19? Two types of contact tracings are manual contact tracing and digital contact tracing. Manual contact tracing was still used in most public health practices where some procedures such as interview by the health team, investigation by health team tracks contacts of the patient, followed by identification where decision will be made, and lastly is referral, which is if the close contact is well, they need to quarantine themselves for 14 days. But if the close contact has symptoms, they need to be referred at the hospital for further management. However, the widespread use of smartphones have invented digital contact tracing approaches that appear to be a viable complement to, if not substitute for manual contact tracing. In Malaysia, Mice Jatra mobile app was developed to basic facilitate nationwide contact tracing efforts and also act as a portal for the national vaccination program. On December 28, 2021, Head Minister Khairi Majamaluddin has encouraged widespread use of a new function on the Mice Jatra app called Mice Jatra Trace that uses Bluetooth to identify close or casual contacts of COVID-19 cases. The Ministry of Health MOH current method is to identify close contacts by looking at who check in to a certain premise via scans on the premise QR code at the same time as a positive COVID-19 case. MyTrace does not track geolocation details. This means that users' private data is not stored nor recorded in the application. How does MyTrace work? MyTrace uses Bluetooth signals to identify mobile phones within a social proximity that are installed with the same app. The app allows any phones with MyTrace to exchange information when they are in proximity of each other. Using Bluetooth's Receive Signal Strength Indicator RSSI, readings, time of meeting and physical distance between the two app users can be identified. If a user is diagnosed as COVID-19 positive, the health authorities will get in touch with the patient's close contacts based on data collected through MyTrace contact tracing logs. Each MyTrace user automatically contributes to the contact tracing logs. Data collected through the log allows the health authority to safely identify and get in touch with individuals at risk of infection. This will hasten further actions such as head screening, quarantine, or self-isolation to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Now, I'll pass to Subishin and Safina to give information on SOP and government policy. Thank you, Aiman. Good day, everyone. Today, we're going to talk about the government policies that is being implemented by the Malaysian government during the COVID-19 pandemic. When the first case of COVID-19 registered in Malaysia, during our early 2020, there are so many government policies being established. First and the foremost is the establishment of the Movement Control Order or known as the MCO. People are not allowed to leave their house unnecessarily during the MCO period. This significantly reduces the virus spread. Second one is the screening mechanism in all the airports. Whoever is travelling back to Malaysia need to isolate themselves and quarantine for 14 days. This is to make sure that they are safe and they are not spreading the virus to other people. Following that, the Ministry of Health decided to minimise the spread of the virus by deploying the thermal scanner. The thermal scanner able to detect the raise in the temperature. So this this raise in the temperature is the major symptoms of COVID-19. The thermal scanner has been placed in all places including the restaurant and shopping mall. Finally, the establishment of the special fund known, known as the COVID-19 fund. The money that's being gathered through the COVID-19 fund 
is given and distributed to the patient and for those who are affected financially affected during the quarantine procedure during the uh, quarantine procedure rm100 ringgit is given to all the patients and those who don't have the source of income the money that's been gathered is being used for the equipments for the medical equipments for them so here are the few examples of the government policies that's been implemented during the pandemic so now i would like to pass to shafina to talk further about this malaysia had entered the endemic phase in late 2021 this improvement it happens due to the vaccination rate achieved among the adult population and the improved covid-19 situation in malaysia the government had announced the new SOPs to prepare for the endemic phase. This SOP has been implemented in Malaysia according to each sector, especially those that involve the public like the education sector and the economic sector. The SOPs for education sector can be divided into three categories. First, are the higher education students who are having their classes conducted through hybrid learning where lectures are being done online and classes that involve lab and practical done through face-to-face -face, but the number of students per session is being restricted. Second, the secondary and primary students are having class by rotation method where only half students need to attend in the first session and the rest will have a class later. And third, for kindergarten children, they are allowed to attend their class as usual but with restricted SOPs for their safety. Next, for economic sector, the premises such as restaurants and retail shops are fully open but with restricted SOPs. First, the customers need to wear their face masks and second, scan the QR code by using My Sejahtera apps. However, only those that had completed two doses of vaccines are allowed to enter. Third, check their body temperature and it needs to be less than 37 degrees Celsius before entering the premise. Lastly, everyone, either students or adults, needs to practice 3W, which are washing hands with soap frequently, wearing masks, and warning by practicing coughing and sneezing etiquette. Besides maintaining one meter social distancing and always use hand sanitizers in order to avoid the spread of the virus. Thank you. Thank you, Sirvishin and Safina. Now I'll pass to our journalist, Ifa. Ifa, are you there? Yeah. Thank you, Anmai. So now we are live from Sedang. I will interview one of the residents in this area. Hi, Miss. Okay, can I ask you a question? Yes. How do you know about COVID-19? And do you think that mass media would play an important role in educating public about COVID-19? For me personally, I think mass media play a very important role in uh, educating public awareness for COVID-19 diseases. This is because um, me, myself, I obtain the information from uh, mass media such as uh, Facebook, Twitter and so on. Critical sources such as WHO and Ministry of Health in Malaysia, they publish infographic or and info in Twitter, Instagram and so on. However, there are many fake news in the social media. Therefore, we have to be aware and selective enough to before we believe the thing. That's all for me. Thank you, Ifa. That's all from Immuno News Channel. I'm Ayman Adam. Bye for now.